How to make a photo look better in Photoshop. Hey everybody, right now I'm going to show you my entire workflow start to finish on editing a photo. First thing, we're going to open a photo, file, open, navigate to the photo, and this is the image I'm going to use here. It's a raw file, so it's going to start in camera raw. So the film strip can be taking up a lot of space. Let's just tap on the film strip. There we go. Now we can see our photo better. All right, so the first thing we want to do is jump into a profile. So you'll see the profile says Adobe Color. Click on the little browse presets here. And we're going to go down to the camera matching. And this is where I can actually look at the ones on the camera. Now, I was shooting here out of a helicopter with a Sony A1. It doesn't really matter what camera you're using. You're going to see your camera profiles in here. And uh, I'm just rolling over and seeing which profiles are a good starting place. I kind of like this one here. This is giving me more of a neutral contrast, not as much contrast. And also I like the colors better here. So we're going to start with that. And then we're just going to click the back and this will take me in to the camera raw settings again. Now I'm going to take the temperature and warm it up just a little bit. Sometimes I like to do that with the landscape photos. Now we want to set our exposure. So you'll notice that the exposure will adjust the brights and darks. But before I do the exposure, I usually jump ahead to the highlights and shadows. So the highlights are going to look for any areas that are blowing out. Usually it's in the sky. In this case, we can see a little bit of detail, but I want to bring back some cloud detail. So I'm going to take the highlights back to the left. Notice as we do that, it definitely pops a lot more detail in the sky. Now we're going to do the same thing with the shadows. Notice down here it's kind of dark. I'd like it to be a little bit brighter, but I don't want to overly brighten the whole image at the moment because then I'll start to lose what I brought into the sky. So the next one is shadows. So I use these as a recovery slider. Notice as we do that, see how only the shadow areas are changing and not the highlight areas. So let's pull this up quite high. I'm going to go really high on this and that's giving me just an overall shadow highlight. Now we can do an overall exposure. So let's just maybe just pop the exposure a little bit more. Great. Now it's looking a little lacking contrast, like kind of looking through a dirty window. So I'm going to give the blacks and maybe the whites a little pop. So let's do the blacks. Notice there's a little gap there on the histogram on the left hand side. That means that nothing is in pure black. Here's a tip. If you hold down the Alt or the Option key, when you slide this, it will actually give an indication when it starts to clip. So if I release, I can see, okay, that's where it is. So this is where we were, and this is kind of pushing it back, giving it a little bit more kick in there. Now I'm going to do the same thing in the whites, hold down the Alt or the Option, and drag it up, and I can see that's where it starts to blow out in that area. All right, so let's have a look and hit the backslash key. This is where we were when we started, and this is where we are now. So I'm opening up more detail there in the shadows and highlights. So you can use a contrast if you want. And, uh, and sometimes I will just give it a little flavor. In fact, I'll give it just a little boost of contrast, but not too much there. Contrast is essentially the same as using the whites and blacks together, but I like the control I get over whites and blacks. So then we've got these settings here. Once upon a time, I used to use the clarity a lot, and you can see the clarity kind of gives it an appearance of being a little bit sharper. I don't use it so much now. I like to use the texture, and the texture brings out the details in those textures without giving halos around the edges. It keeps the edges looking better. In fact, let me zoom all the way in here, and you can see if I use clarity, see how the clarity just makes it look a little artificial. So I'm just going to click back out. And what I am going to do though is I'm going to give it a little kick of dehaze because the dehaze can really make these clouds look good. So let's just give it just a little touch. And notice as I do that, it really clears up the image, but it does darken it a little bit. So when you do that, sometimes you have to roll back off on the blacks. And if I hold the Alt option, I can actually see on the bottom there. See how those are looking? They're clipping. I'm just going to pull it back a little bit so we're not clipping anymore. Definitely looking better. Where are we now? Before, after. You can see we're starting to bring out a lot more detail in our image. Let's go down. And we will go into Photoshop in a minute, but we just want to do these preliminary big, big moves first here. All right, so the next one I want to do is go under the optics. And under the optics, let's use the profile corrections. So these are the actual camera profiles. Because see, we've got a little bit of warping, a little bit of distortion there. When we turn that on, Notice how it removes it. And what it does is it looks at the camera 
and the lens. So it's applying that lens profile there, knowing that I'm using a 24 to 70 f2.8 uh, G Master lens. So it knew that, and the database has most cameras in there. And notice what it did is it actually did three things. The first thing it did, let me turn it off again. See that warping? It gets rid of the warping. The other thing is it removes the vignetting around the edges. So if we go here, notice there's a little vignetting. See how it's a little darker towards the edges of the lens. When I turn that on, that removes that. And the third thing it does is it fixes chromatic aberration. Now the chromatic aberration is fringing, color fringing. A photo like this, you may not really notice it much, uh, but in some photos, it can be more of a problem than others. And you have to zoom in really, really close to see that. All right, I think we're looking pretty good for our basic adjustments. So once again, before, after, looking good. Now I'm gonna open this, but don't just hit open. Hold the shift key down and you'll see the option to open object. So when I click here now, what it's gonna do is it's gonna open this as a smart object inside of Photoshop. Control Command Zero to fill the screen. Looking much better. Now why did we use a smart object? Couple of reasons. One is it's non-destructive, it protects the pixels. But the other one is if I want to go back into Camera Raw at any time, I can double click and this will take me back into Camera Raw. And if you look, notice all the settings are where we left them. So we can change that anytime later on. Let me cancel that because I'm pretty happy of where we were. So why don't we start with the dodging and burning now. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to hold down the Alt or the Option key and click the new layer icon. And I'm just going to call this DB for dodge and burn, and I'm gonna change the mode into overlay. Now, when I go into overlay, it gives me the ability to fill this with a 50% gray. This isn't necessary if we're gonna use the brushes, but if we are gonna use other tools such as dodge and burn tools and uh, different things like that, we're gonna turn it on and get that 50% gray. If you look at it, because it's an overlay mode, you don't see the gray. If I go to normal, you will see the gray. Let's go back to overlay. And some people like to work in a soft light or a hard light, and that's perfectly acceptable as well. Now I'm gonna create a, a different one. I'm gonna copy it again, Control J. So now I get two of these, and I'm gonna call this one lights. So what we're doing is separating them into two layers. We're gonna do the darker areas, and then we're gonna do the lighter areas. By putting them onto separate layers, it gives us the ability to adjust the strength of that later on if I get a little heavy handed, which is very easy to do. All right, so let's just start. I'm just gonna do some basic dodging and burning. I'm not gonna get too carried away because I really wanna focus on the workflow here. So hit the D key and that resets the foreground background colors inside of Photoshop. And then I'm gonna grab a brush. So let's grab the brush tool and then under the brush, let's choose the brushes. And I'm going to take the hardness all the way down. In fact, why don't we start with a soft round brush? So what I'm looking for is a nice brush with hardness set to zero or a soft brush. You can adjust the hardness on any of a, uh, Photoshop's default brushes. Okay, I'm just going to tap away to close that. Now, let's just tap on this other option. No, it's going to open up the brush settings. And the reason for that is I'm using a pressure sensitive Wacom pen. If you don't have one of these, it's fine. Just set your opacity up here to a lower, lower amount, such as, you know, around about a 20. Uh, but I'm going to be using pen pressure on this particular one. So what I like to do is choose transfer and set that to pen pressure. That means if I push harder, I'm going to get more of the effect. I press lighter, I get less shading like you would on a pencil. Once again, if you don't have a pressure sensitive tablet, no big deal. Just drop your opacity down to about 20% and then uh, you're just going to build it up over, over time. All right, next thing I want to do is I want to adjust the flow. Now, opacity is how much ink do you get or how much strength do you get from your brush. The flow is how fast does it come out. So whether or not you adjust the opacity, you want to use a lower flow so that you can build up your effect over time. So I'm going to drop that down to about 10%. Now, the way to do that is to hold the shift key and then tap any number key. If I tap, say, the seven key with the shift, it'll set the flow to 70%. So it goes in increments of 10, three for 30%, and of course, one for 10%. If I don't hold down the shift key and say I, I hit the three, it adjusts the opacity. So if you're using a mouse, maybe tap the two, or you can just use the sliders up there 
and that'll give you that 20%. But I'm just going to tap zero, so I have 100% opacity, and I'm going to work with 10% flow because I'm using pen pressure. Now, the other thing you might want to adjust is the size of your brush on the fly. If you hold down the control and the option key on Mac and drag up or down, you can change the hardness. Drag left to right, you can change the size of the brush. Now, on Windows, that would be Alt and then right drag. All right. So that's one way of doing it there. And let's just go a little bit smaller, maybe around here. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to do an overall dodge and burn for composition. In fact, I'm going to go a little larger. So right now I'm painting with black onto the dark layer, which is burning. If you can't remember the difference between burning and dodging, dodging is lightning, burning is darkening. Uh, just think of burning toast it makes it darker. Now, these are terms that come from the dark room. Let me just start to paint a little bit, and this will give me a little bit more. See how I'm bringing out more of the detail here in the clouds now? And see how the, just the darks are coming out, and that's just really building that up. And I can just do that by hand. Now, yeah, I could have used a targeted uh, curves adjustment too, but I kind of like what we're getting here. If we look at this before and after, yeah, we're popping those clouds. Nice. Let's do a little bit more maybe on the horizon too. I feel like it's getting a little just faded. I'm just giving it just a little bit of burning across there too. And then let's do the corners to give us more of a vignette and the bottom. And that vignette is kind of just bringing the viewer's eye into the image. And I'm just doing an overall compositional right now. I'm not trying to do anything with shape. All I'm doing is just adding the shade, you know, just for once again, composition, just relighting the main part of the photo. All right, so let's go to the lights and then we're going to hit the X key and this is going to give me the lighter area. Now, if I wanted to emphasize certain areas of sunshine, I can do that. Now, another way of working with this rather than using the keyboard shortcut and dragging to change the brush size, you can also hit the left bracket key to make it smaller, right bracket key to make it bigger. Okay, so I'm going to add just a little patch of light. I feel like we can look for a, I'm looking for a little trail somewhere to lead the eye so I'm painting with these lighter tones just in this area here and this is going to give the you know just the feel that there's a little bit of sunlight kind of coming through here and let's give it a little bit there now sometimes you can go on to the uh, shadow layer and then paint in there as well and that can help um, you know we might do that in a little bit I just want to just kind of lead the eye into the photo. And I just feel like maybe this area here, I want to lighten that up a little bit and see what I'm doing. Just painting an overall, just creating that path of light. And then it just kind of creates a visual interest in the photo. And I'm just going to give it just a little touch up there too. So if we have a look and see what we did before and after with the dodging and burning, there we are before. It's kind of, it's cool, but it's a little flat and after notice what we're doing we're actually creating this area that we want to focus on i feel for the light the overlay is a little strong so maybe i could try a soft light or a hard light see the hard light's not going to work well but the soft light might look good there's overlay there's soft light i think the soft light is a little better see that so it's not blowing out the colors or causing us to lose some of that area in the photo now another thing i can do sometimes is i want to create a little bit of shape with dodging and burning so let's create another dodge and burn layer. Hold down the Alt or the Option key, create a new layer. And uh, we're going to put this into our overlay. Great. And we're going to fill that. Click OK. Now, another reason I do fill it sometimes is if you look at the light layer here, let me just go in to show you something. And I want to undo this. What I can do is I can select the brush here and I can choose a 50% gray. So if you go under the B for brightness, change it to 50. Um, and then that way I can just dial away. See, so if I want to erase that, I can literally start to just paint away. Okay, so we're going to hit the D key, reset foreground, background colors, still working with 10% flow. And I'm just going to show you just a little bit of how I can create some shape and dimension here using this dodge and burn. I'm going to stay way out here. We're maybe coming a little bit. But sometimes, you know, when I'm working on these and I want to really spend some time on an image, I can zoom in quite tight and uh, just spend a little time. But let me just paint these shadows a little bit and uh, maybe I'll just speed this up and stop talking 
and uh, you can see what's happening. All right, I'm going to stop there for now. And this is what we've done with the shadows. See how we've just kind of added those in and see how it kind of adds some dimension to the image. Now, once again, I'll spend more time doing this than I am now, but I just want to quickly do it for this tutorial. Now, let's do the same thing with the highlights. And this is just going to kiss it with light and just really make the image come to life. It's actually my favorite part. So once again, Alt Option, create a new layer, put it into overlay blend mode, hit that 50% gray. Click OK. Now remember, you know, for some of these areas I want to wind back those shadows, I can paint 50% gray onto that layer and undo it. But let's hit the X key. It's going to give us white as our foreground color. And once again, I'm going to stop talking and I'm just going to do just a couple of minutes and then just kind of speed it up so you can see what I'm doing here. All right, so notice how those lighter areas just tend to lift those parts of the image. If we look at it with before and then after, see what we're doing. And there's our shadows and highlights. Just turn those both off, turn them back on. It's adding dimension now. Now, if we turn off all our dodging and burning layers and you can see there's the original image, there it is afterwards. Now, what you can do sometimes is put these into a group. So I'm going to hold down the shift key and select. It gets all of them and then just hit control G or command G and I'm just going to call it DB for dodge and burn. So if you feel like, okay, the effect is good, but it's, it's a little bit strong, which can easily happen because as you begin to paint, um, you know, you, you, you keep adding to it. So if we roll it off, there it is with no effect. And now we could just put it in. If you wanted it more subtle, you could take up to around about a 43, you know, it's looking pretty good there. There's a hundred. It's very strong. There's nothing. So I'm going to kind of bring it up a little bit. I'm going to make it just a little bit stronger just for the sake of the video. So um, maybe put it there. So it's a little bit more natural before, after, and you can see it's starting to give us a little bit of dimension there to the photo. Now, of course, you can go in and you can do the separate layers. Now, before we sharpen this, I'm going to do one other thing. I'm going to select everything and then I'm going to hold down a keyboard shortcut, which is Option Command Shift and then E. That would be Alt, Control Shift, and the letter E on Windows to create a new layer on top. This new layer contains everything underneath. It's just flattened into one layer while preserving everything underneath. Great. Now let's go into the Camera Raw one more time. So we're going to choose Filter, and we're going to use Camera Raw. Now, the reason I do this is the adjustment. The final adjustment is just going to pull everything together because everything is one and I just want to unify it. So I'm going to take this temperature, maybe warm it up just a little bit more. There we go. I like those kind of tones. Nice. And let's recover the highlights a little bit more again, just a touch and maybe the shadows and give it a little punch of contrast there. Nice. So see what it's doing is just kind of bringing this image together. We look at this before and after it's just enriching it a little bit. Maybe, too. you know, there's the vibrance there. It's not bad. Of course, Hawaii, this is on the Kauai and Hawaii. It's um, let's give it just a little bit, but it already has a lot of natural color saturation. But maybe because of the haze, we're losing a little bit. That's looking pretty good. And now you could sharpen in here if you want, but I'm going to sharpen this a different way. Let's click OK. This is, this is starting to look good. Now I'm going to do non-destructive sharpening. So control J will duplicate that layer. And then we're going to change it to overlay blend mode. Now it's going to look overly contrasty and everything for a second. This is just transitional. Then we're going to choose filter other, and then we're going to grab high pass. So this is what's known as high pass sharpening. So we're going to turn on the high pass sharpening and notice right now it looks a little sketched, you know, kind of painterly. Let's pull this back. It's a little much. So what I want to do is just give it just a little bit of sharpening here. So if we look at these areas, you can see we're just looking for those just to kind of pick that up, give it a little bit of texture looking good. That's nice. And if we look at this before and after, I'm not sure if, you know, you can see it with the compression on the screen, but it's it's quite clear here. It's giving us some more 
sharpening, which is looking quite nice. Now, if you didn't want to sharpen a background, what you can do is create a layer mask, which is what I've done here, and then just choose a gradient. And with the gradient, when you're working on a layer mask, black will hide that layer and then white will leave it untouched. So we just want to get the top. We just want to paint away the sharpening just at the top. So let's make sure we've set black as our foreground color there. And then we're using a linear gradient. And I'm just going to drag down just a little bit in that area. So notice the transition will happen just in that area that I'm dragging in. So everything outside of the top will be completely um, erased on that layer or hidden and then everything in between the transitional area will over time slowly uh, transition so there we go so if i hold down the alt or the option key and i click the areas that are black are hidden the areas of gray are fading so we don't get you know a, an abrupt but if you look at it here you'll see the sharpening as i hide the sharpening see that how the sharpening is appearing in the foreground but in the sky and in the background it's not sharpening and you don't want to sharpen distance because that's atmospheric perspective. It adds, you know, a lot to the image. So if you look at the image there, there's our before and there's our after. And this is the process that I more or less go through on every single photo that I do. Sometimes I might skip some steps. Sometimes I might add some different steps. So this gives an overall feel of how I like to edit my landscape photos. One thing that you notice is very important is I've kept everything non-destructive. So anything can be changed at any time. And also one last tip, sometimes when you go away and then come back and you look at it with fresh eyes, you'll see things that you don't necessarily see when you're working on the image. So I hope you guys enjoyed this. Let me know in the comments underneath uh, what you thought and also what you'd like me to cover at some time in my tutorials. If you haven't yet subscribed, hit the subscribe button and turn on the notifications. You won't miss any of my videos. Also, do me a favor, hit that like button. It helps us with the YouTube algorithm. And until next time, I'll see you at the cafe.